Live from the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference 2016. Brought to you by Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is the intro to day two. Stu and I are going to sort of set the tone I'll give you a sense of what happened to the keynotes if you weren't able to see them. We were live streaming the keynotes, but Stu, we saw in day two, it wasn't about the product, it was about thought leadership themes. Uh, it was about partnerships. Uh, we saw Microsoft up on stage. Uh, great quote, cloud is not a place, it's a model. We couldn't agree more. We talk a lot at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE Media about you know, cloud as an operating model, not a place to put apps and data. And it's really about the fundamental changes in your operations that cloud is so interesting, at least to us. Uh, we saw Dell up on stage uh, with Alan Atkinson. Alan Atkinson, uh, former EMC, former bunch of different storage companies, he catalyzed the deal with Nutanix. We were talking to Alan, I don't know, a while ago, and he said, yeah, I saw these, this company, and I, <clears throat> I wanted to work with them. I wanted to partner with them. He went out, I, Stu, I know you've talked to him this week. I didn't get a chance to, but that deal seems to be working. People, and I'll come back to that, and then we heard Mark Leslie talk about the ARC. Mark was the founder of Veritas, he's a professor at Stanford now. He laid it out, I mean, he nailed Oracle, he nailed Sun, he showed what's going on with Amazon. I mean, he really laid out how, for example, Larry Ellison made some bet your company you know, moves that got them over into the next S-curve, like buying Sun, you know, like the move to go ERP, like the move to consolidate uh, the software industry. And then we had the CIO panel. But I want to start with Dell. So yeah. there's a lot of discussion about the Dell relationship given with Nutanix, given that EMC is going to get acquired by Dell. Many are predicting that's going to go away. Um, we have been saying, mm, don't be so fast to make that prediction. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, at its core, it's very clear when you listen to Michael Dell as to what is important to him and the company. Core to its business, you always say, you know, what does Cisco care about? Cisco cares about selling those, you know, you know, core networking products, and the more things that you know generate IP traffic, the better it is for Cisco. Well, that's core of its business. What does Dell care about? Dell cares about servers. Yes, of course, they want to, you know, in include uh, more uh, more storage, more networking, more uh, you know services and software that goes with that. But at the core of it they want to be the leader in this next wave that comes through. I wrote an article uh, in the fall last year and said, you know, Cisco killed it when it came to converged infrastructure. You look at all the solutions out there, they're the one that everything's based on. Hyperconverged, Dell is, you know, trying to be the, the leader in that space. If you look at the, the, the solutions that are out there, Nutanix used Supermicro, so Dell makes an OEM relationship to get them in the fold. SimpliVity uses uh, uh, Dell as their, their base hardware. Many of the other solutions there either leverage or partner with Dell. Um, so uh, Alan Atkinson got on stage and he said, the question everybody wants to know is, once EMC deal's done, does that mean that's the end of the Nutanix? And he said, no, we've signed an extension to the OEM relationship. We're going to keep it going. So it's going to be real interesting to see, you know, the EMC EMC, VCE stuff, once that starts shipping Dell, and the Dell Nutanix piece, uh, you know, how that plays out in, in the channel and in customers and how those decisions get made. You know, I think that, you know, in looking at the history of these OEM deals, you know, Al Shugart said to me one time that, Dave, if you got to split money with somebody, that means two guys got to make money, and it's always harder. So, in my experience and, and observations, these OEM deals have been, really come down to sort of two categories. One is the company, you know, the buyer, the OEM, you know, receiver, wants to fill a hole in its product line. Or the other is, in the case, for instance, of IBM and its storage business, under Bill Zeitler, it decided that storage wasn't strategic and so it OEM'd a lot of stuff to guys like LSI and, and, uh, and NetApp, so, so and they, they de-emphasized their own R&D. Same thing with Sun, same thing, um, you know, early days anyway with Sun. And so, but what invariably happens is either those deals unravel because somebody can provide a better deal or the company decides to vertically integrate. For instance, in the case of IBM, they acquired XIV and they started to do more and more of their, their own. Um, but there are many cases where it's been long term. Look at HP and, and Hitachi, previous th to that EMC. The EMC deal unraveled because there was a negotiation issue. Uh, we, we have a great conversation on negotiation later. But so here's, a, I guess, what's my point? My point is that I think this deal is going to be solidified for quite a number of years. I think long term, you know, Dell will have to make the decision as to whether it wants to vertically integrate, and I think EMC's got technologies that will probably eventually get there, even though 
they may not be as advanced, but they'll yeah. make more money on that. And that's going to be a business decision, but I don't think that'll come for four, five, six years down the road. Yeah, and, and just one thing, people tend to overestimate how much of Nutanix's business today is with Dell. And not only does uh, the Nutanix have Dell, they also have Lenovo. Lenovo is up on stage. Uh, Radico was talking about the partnership, which is brand new. Uh, we actually have some Wikibon research looking at that environment up on wikibon.com right now. Uh, but combined, Dell and Lenovo, uh, you know, that's not even a third of their business today. And you know, they're, they're not looking for it to be you know, the majority of their business. Uh, Nutanix has you know, many paths to market, uh, and you know, the OEMs are a piece of that overall puzzle, so uh, it shouldn't be overstated how much uh, you know, Nutanix is relying on that. Well, and Alan Atkinson threw the number, he says a 10-figure uh, pipeline. So we're talking 100 plus million in, in pipeline. That, that's substantial, so that's going to take a while to, to play out. I think if, if Dell and EMC can figure out where to put that product in its portfolio, how to appropriately compensate people, how to deal with all the inevitable channel conflicts, and EMC in particular is very experienced at doing that, um, and I think that, uh, so I, I would expect really good things, and that's going to be great news for Nutanix you know, in a period of time, but I think the company has to be careful. It doesn't want that OEM revenue popping up to 20, 30, 40% of its revenue. That would be a warning sign in my view, and I think they're, they're managing that pretty carefully. I think they've done some interesting things with deal registration that um, are protecting the channel, so that's good. Um, let's talk a little bit about stack ownership. What is going on here? Is Nutanix trying to be the next VMware? Yeah, uh, they definitely, uh, last year they moved up the stack, they announced their own hypervisor. Uh, Nutanix isn't trying to be the leader in hypervisors, they're more trying to you know, offer a platform and give customers choice. So you, know, we, you said we saw Microsoft up on stage, we're going to have them on theCUBE today. Uh, the Microsoft stack, what they call Microsoft CPS, uh, that includes Hyper-V, so you know, a, a lot of Nutanix customers are still doing you know, mostly VMware. Uh, we're getting, uh, you know, when it comes to the, the Acropolis hypervisor, uh, you know, it's 15, 20% of customers at least have some of that in their environment. Uh, so, you know, uh, we're going to see choice in there, um, and most customers are, are going to have, a, you know, more than one hypervisor. When I, I talk to uh, a, a number of uh, Nutanix customers that are trying out and, and starting to use Acropolis, and it's not a sweep the floor, it's a, you know, tactical thing that they'll do to save cost and simplify their environment, uh, and at the end of the day, uh, there's a great line from uh, Sunil yesterday on theCUBE is, you know, what is the stickiness of Nutanix, and it needs to be really that, that simplicity and making it invisible. And if that can include a larger piece of the stack where uh, you know, I add in uh, you know, the hypervisor and maybe I add in more of the management stack. Uh, you know, great discussion out of DockerCon this week as to Docker's you know, integrating orchestration into uh, what, 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 what the, the base Docker platform is in the Docker 1.1.2. So used to say, how many different pieces do I need to cobble together? We love building these stack diagrams. Brian Gracely's great at doing those. And the more I can you know, boil that down to you know, a single, what, what David Floyer calls a single managed entity, the easier it is, and the, the higher up the stack I go, we actually see exponential value on, uh, to, to the customer because it just you know, takes just so many things off of their plate to help you know, uh, us focus on the business, rather you know, growing the business and transforming the business rather than just running the business. Well, and that's where Oracle's making its, its hay and, and so-called engineered systems. So, okay, uh, real quick, Stu, uh, your take on the announcements uh, yesterday and today. Yeah, so I mean, more, more than we have time to go through right now, Dave, but uh, you know, absolutely, they're, they're baking out that stack, they're maturing it, they're giving that vision as to how they uh, add in, uh, not just uh, you know, inspired by cloud, but really how does that hybrid cloud or what uh, the, you know, Nutanix is calling the enterprise cloud message fits. Um, all of the companies that have on-premises as their primary deployment model are struggling a little bit with how do I, you know, how do I interact with the AWS, you know, Googles and, and Microsofts of the world. I'm um, interested to dig in more on the Microsoft piece here. Um, but you know, good progress, uh, you know, good mix of the stuff that's available today and enough vision for what's coming down the future. So uh, you know, good crowd and we're, you know, we've got a full day of coverage here to talk to a bunch more practitioners. All right, Stu, great analysis as usual, thank you. Um, Let's talk about the future uh, in a minute. We've got Mark Templeton coming on. How do, how do companies stay re relevant? There's a lot of talk about consumerization of IT. What about the humanization of IT? We're going to have that conversation with Mark, former CEO of Citrix. Keep right there, everybody. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back from Las Vegas.